Today, the spectrum of industries in our country extends from organized large and medium industries to modern small-scale industries and unorganized traditional industries. Traditionally, an Indian village enjoyed almost complete economic autonomy and self-sufficiency. Apart from agriculture allied sector, traditionally, village industries provided an important source of income and employment to the rural people. Artisans, though on the lower rung of society, were an integral part of economic and social rural organizations. The gradually increasing mechanization has curtailed the capability of the agricultural field to absorb a greater number of laborers. This made a dent restricting traditional industries, thus creating unemployment in rural areas. This situation created migration of the rural population to urban areas to seek employment. The increase in migration trend has resulted in a number of socio-economic problems. Slums have come up in urban areas, thereby causing hygienic implication. This has necessitated promotion of village and small industries to prevent migration of rural population. The rural industrialization has helped in overall growth and dispersal of industries through the entire length and breadth of vast rural India. Pottery is perhaps the first art man had ever acquired. It is basically a creative work. The transformation of art takes place from one generation to another. This 
industry is an indispensable economic activity and lakhs of artisans depend on it for their daily bread. Ironic fact is that art always nourishes and flourishes in the course of time but the artisan lags behind owing to socio-economic conditions. The art of making khansari and gur from sweet extract of sugarcane is an age-old agro-based cottage industry. This industry occupies an important place in the rural economy of our country. Open pan boiling system of processing khansari and gur is exclusively carried out in rural cane growing areas throughout the country. It is estimated that about 25 lakh persons are engaged in this particular vocation. The sugarcane waste, after extracting the juice, is dried up in open fields and is used as fuel by the rural people. industry provides largest employment in the decentralized sector, next only to agriculture. In the production and export fields, handlooms have registered significant increase and have contributed in a big way. Khadi, handlooms, village industries, handicrafts are the subsectors which constitute the traditional industries. Modern small-scale industries and unorganized traditional industries are known as village and small industries. These two account for more than one-third of the total export of the country. In terms of value added, these contribute about 50% of that of manufacturing sector. More and more sophisticated items are being produced in this sector and have been accepted in India and foreign markets increasingly. facilitate modernization and achieve rapid growth, the up limit of investment in plant and machinery has been raised in respect of small units 
from rupees 20 lakhs to rupees 35 lakhs. Ranging from small mixy components to manufacturing heavy duty gears, this sector has shown a vast scope for productivity. A number of industries come under the purview of cottage industries like Khadi. and looms beekeeping poultry village leather Soap making, agarbatti making, gur and khansari, fruit and vegetable processing. Carpentry, Blacksmithy, Manufacture of Biogas, Sheep Rearing, Bamboo and cane work, dairy farming, ghani oil, etc. The production in village and small industry sector has increased from 33,538 crores in 1979-80 to 65,730 crores in 1984-85. Exports from rupees 2,280.62 crores in 1979-80 2 rupees 4557.56 crores in 1984-85 with regard to employment it has increased from 233.72 lakh persons in 1979-80 to 315 lakh persons in 1984-85 The production of handicrafts in special has shown a big increase in exports. Special emphasis has been laid on the preservation of crafts, skills with respect to cultural heritage, artistic and aesthetic beauty of certain handicrafts. There has been consistent increase in the earnings of the artisans because of increasing demand for the handicraft items.
These goods have fascinated the foreigners in special and have created a good market in India and abroad. Better marketing arrangements have been provided to promote their sale through government emporia. The production to handicrafts has increased from Rs. 2050 crores in 1979-80 to Rs. 3500 crores by 1984-85. During the same period, the exports have gone up from Rs. 854 crores to 1700 crores. The question of employment in handicraft sector has considerably been stepped up from 20.3 lakh persons to 27.4 lakh persons. The rural industrialization has thus created opportunities to facilitate the attainment of major tasks for removal of poverty and steadily narrow down the disparities between urban and rural incomes. The promotion of village and small industries in rural areas has helped in employment of local resources, both human and physical. This has also helped revitalizing and developing traditional industries. The growth and development, especially for the traditional group of industries, has been constrained by several factors like technological obsolescence, unorganized marketing channels, unorganized nature of operations, inadequate availability of credits, Deficient managerial and technical skills. Quality consciousness has not been generated to the desired level despite various measures taken in this regard. constraints have resulted in placing this sector at a disadvantage vis-a-vis -vis the large industries both in domestic and export markets. the desired objectives, government has launched various programs through different agencies like Khadi and Village Industries Commission, District Industries Centers, State Financial Corporations, Industrial Development Bank of India, District Rural Development Agencies, Small Industries Service Institutes and rural industries planning committees etc.
Government of India, Ministry of Education, introduced the scheme of a community polytechnics in 1979. These community polytechnics are engaged in identifying the need-based trades and are imparting relevant training for gainful employment to the rural poor and for upgradation of technology in traditional skills to increase productivity and improve quality. Small industry service institutes conduct training courses in various vocations. Training is imparted in glass blowing, lathe, thermometer making, etc. Rural youth from different states are given job-oriented training through extension centers in gas welding, diesel engine repairs, tow tractor repairs, etc. Integrated training centers are training students through short term programs on ceramics, pottery, soap making, etc. Institutes of Designs for Handicrafts are engaged in conducting courses in skills like cut glass, pottery, etc. Although village and small industries have achieved the targets in terms of output, employment and exports, there is still need to overcome the existing gaps to improve general level of welfare of the workers and artisans to strengthen entrepreneurial base to increase opportunities for self-employment to expand share of its products in domestic market through market support. To optimize utilization of existing capacities with adequate supply of raw materials. Also there is need to transfer appropriate technology 
and to employ local resources, both human and physical, to enhance this sector's contribution in building an economically stronger nation.